Hey everybody, welcome back to Welcome to Mintland, the podcast. This is chapter 11. Welcome to Mintland. The greatest place on earth has blooming green turf. It's always a magical day when you're in red. Welcome back, everyone. This is Eric Moran, and we are preparing for the incredible chapter 11. This chapter, uh, the Minnie Mints and Mickey head down to Orlando, Florida at the ESPN Wide World of Sports for their final competition of the year, which is UCA. In this chapter, we are going to set the stage um, for how this team is going to perform uh, after Coach Ashley has put together an amazing goal of a mini team going after an at-large bid to compete at Summit. This is a very fun chapter. Um, during this read, uh, we've actually put together uh, a, an interview with Coach Ashley. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to join us on the actual podcast, but she, uh, in her super busy schedule of coaching three teams, and being an amazing fifth grade teacher, she was able to correspond with me via email. So I'm going to have a guest speaker, Miss Kara Witsip, uh, read her answers to some of the questions that I asked her about the season. And thank you, thank you for all the responses. I've re- received so many emails and Twitter questions. Um, about the team and their journey. And uh, in this interview with Coach Ashley, I'm going to break it up uh, a question before I read the chapter and then a couple more after I read the chapter. And, you know, some of the questions that I've been asked from uh, fans of the podcast and of the book is, you know, was this something that Coach Ashley had thought about uh, you know, earlier in the season, did did she see this happening in this talent from this little team um, for a while, or was the decision to go for a summit bid was this a spontaneous um, type of decision? You know, a lot of people wanted to know, um, you know, how they did it, or uh, just the whole scenario about it. And in this chapter, we will get into that. So, uh, without further ado. Um, I am going to start to get into the question and answer with Coach Ashley. Then we will get into the chapter 11 read, and you will learn all about the amazing, amazing UCA competition uh, that happened in 2015. So hold on for the ride. We're about to get ready. Here we go. Uh, We are joined now virtually by Coach Ashley of the 2015 Uh, Stingray All-Stars Peppermint. And my goal here was to really kind of get inside Coach Ashley's head, see what she was thinking during this time period. Uh, We as parents and and me as a team dad and and the athletes can only speculate on what she was thinking and why she was thinking it. But it's always really special to hear it uh, from the person themselves. So, um, Unfortunately, Coach Ashley couldn't join me on the actual podcast as she is so extremely busy right now coaching three teams, and she is also an amazing uh, teacher. So with those time constraints and uh, me going back and forth with cheer and shuttling my kids and her practice schedule at night, uh, she was very gracious to share some email Uh, answers to some of the questions I sent her. And um, we have a very special guest, Kara Witsip, uh, who is going to read some of her answers um, that I received from Coach Ashley. So wanted to go ahead and get into the first question. Uh, The first question I posed to Ashley was, after NCA, how did this idea to go to Summit come into your head? Was this something you were thinking about prior to NCA? Or did this just happen uh, after? And and how did it all come about so quickly? Well, since Peppermint had been very successful that year, several coaches had joked about the idea of us going youth and going to Summit. I always laughed it off, and I thought, no way we are actually going to do that. Our goal was to get first in small mini one at Cheer Sport, NCA, and UCA. 
But after losing NCA, I was on the way to dinner with a couple of coaches and someone brought it up again. This time, instead of laughing it off, I thought, why not? Our original goal hadn't worked out. They were extremely talented and the challenge would be fun for them. That is the first of three questions I asked Coach Ashley. The other two questions will be answered after the Chapter 11 reading. And as a teaser, the next question I am going to ask Coach Ashley is, in her heart of hearts, did she really think this mini-team could pull it off? Her answer, after the Chapter 11 reading. Enjoy. Chapter 11, UCA. As families made their way to UCA and the competition schedule came out, many of the parents, including myself, completed the due diligence to find out who we were competing against. Upon researching, we found out one of the teams had already won a full paid bid to Summit by winning cheer sport and outperforming many of the level one teams in Atlanta for the large youth division. The competition was going to be tough. At this point in the year, everyone was vying for the final bid and positions, and Peppermint could end up winning the Youth Large Division at UCA and still not end up receiving a bid to Summit. Not only did they have to win, but they also needed to outshine all the Level 1 teams from Youth, Junior, and Senior Divisions in order to be considered for a bid. A very tall order for this young team. Of course, we did not share any of this with Peppermint. They already knew, week after week, they were going to be up against the best. They already knew they were going to be underdogs going in to win, much less win an at-large bid to Summit. They knew what was expected of them, and they did not need any more pressure, just reassurance to do their best. At this point in the season, When the little minis that could get into the zone, it was lights out. We only prayed they would be able to duplicate their performance two more times and make believers out of the new additions that they could, in fact, make this happen one more time. We began hearing that Peppermint was gaining quite a following as word spread about their quest. We started receiving words of encouragement around the nation from Twitter, Fierce Board, and other methods, including a very touching letter we received from a little girl in Massachusetts. The letter appeared at Stingrays and caught the eye of one of our parents, who was touched that a little girl was so inspired to write a letter to her favorite gym. The letter began by stating that Stingrays was her favorite gym in the whole world, other than her own, of course. She mentioned the fabulous teams that make Stingrays so special. Orange, Peach, Steel. And then she mentioned how she absolutely loves everything about Peppermint. The note went on to say that it would make her day if someone from Orange could write her back in their spare time. The parents were so touched by her simple note and flattered that they even mentioned Peppermint. We as a parent group made it our mission to include our special little fan in our journey. We collaborated as parents and rounded up special items from all her favorite teams, orange, peach, steel, and peppermint, sent a care package to let her know that we received her note. One of the parents actually spoke with the girl's mother and became friends on Facebook so she could follow the progress of her favorite teams via social media. The entire letter was very touching and a few of the girls from each of the teams actually became friends via social media, as well as including a few of the Peppermints. The parents assured the girl we would keep her up to date on all her favorite teams, as it was almost time to head down for the final competition. It was the middle of March, and the weather was gorgeous for the drive down to Orlando. Many of the families extended their trip and left a day early to enjoy the parks at Disney. This competition had a bit of a different vibe, as the routine was pretty much set in stone. The typical pressures of hoping everyone made it on time and was accounted for on travel day was a bit different, as almost the entire team was present early. What also helped 
is that the team has a pleasant distraction before the competition. Peppermint was able to bond at the swimming pool or head out together to the theme parks. The vibe seemed a bit looser and more relaxed than a normal competition. By early Friday afternoon, the entire team was accounted for. I carefully crafted a text message to show all the parents, reminding them to get to bed at a respectable hour. I reiterated the entire plan for the next morning, meet time, where to meet, and what was going to happen the best I could for the following day. I also reminded the parents we would be entering the ESPN wide world of sports, and it is a very busy venue, so plan for traffic. As we arrived early Saturday morning at the ESPN wide world of sports, it was buzzing. Buses from teams all over the nation were arriving. The parking lot was filling up quickly as thousands of all-star cheerleaders and their parents descended on the venue. This was many of the Peppermint's first time competing at UCA, and the competition is very different in nature. The venue is beautiful, and for the most part, everything is outside except for the competition arenas. The team seemed very excited as they all began to trickle in on our morning meeting destination. My team dad backpack was out and ready for the normal typical small emergencies, such as a lipstick touch-up, an ibuprofen for headaches, typically from the parents, fingernail polish removers, nail clippers, and extra bows and socks just in case. As I complete roll call and count the final few peppermints arriving, everyone seems in great spirits. The team was allowed to take off their warm-ups early as the weather was warming up in the Florida sun. The newly formed team gathered as they normally do, but this time there were a few new groups as the new members of the Peppermints were included in the pre-competition fun. It was validation of the warmth and acceptance exhibited by this entire team all year. Peppermint included everyone, and it only solidified the team bond even more. As the team lined up for warm-ups, the parents said their final goodbyes. The team lined up, and away they went. Beecher gave a final hug to his mom, gave me a smile and a high five. The next time we would see them, they would be trying to do the impossible for the first time competing in the youth division. As we waited for the team to perform, the parents all congregated in the ESPN restaurant located within the venue. There were a number of Stingray parents from other teams who noticed us all sitting together and went out of their way to come over and wish our team luck. We also spoke with parents from random gyms around the nation that were competing in various different divisions. They came over to wish us luck as well, as they heard about Peppermint going up in age group and thought it was the coolest thing. Many of the parents asked how we as parent group were holding up. They wanted to know if the team was nervous, if they were excited. Some wanted to know how long it took them to perform their stunt. It was flattering that people were so in tune with what our kids were doing. They wanted to know which venue they competed in so they could all watch. It was great to bond with all the parents, both from Stingrays and non-Stingray teams. It really speaks to the camaraderie of the sport. One of the parents could not help the irony of being at Disney World and the team's nickname being the Mini Mints and Mickey. It seemed fate could be on the side of this team, but there was still a long way to go. As it inched closer to performance time, we all headed toward the venue to find seats. I caught up with the team as they were making their way into the venue for warm-ups. I was asked to help keep the team assembled up in the stands. The entire crew was in such good spirits. They did not seem nervous at all, but were pretty amped up. It is very interesting how young children vent their nervous energy. They could go from laughing hysterically to crying hysterically in a matter of seconds. Although they were a great team, they were still young kids. The quicker we could get them backstage, the better. They did well with structure. Unfortunately, hanging out with me was definitely not structure. 
At this point of the season, I was viewed as the crazy uncle for the entire team. I pulled out all the stops trying to te- keep the team together. Sally Walker, the telephone game, nothing worked. I had to come up with something quick. We started the dance party in your seat game, and thank God that struck a chord. Luckily, that game bought me five minutes before the coaches finally took the team. I am sure it was quite entertaining for the parents surrounding the team watching me trying to keep the kids entertained. With all the chaos over, the team disappeared behind the curtain, and we were moments away from day one. The teams began performing, and it was different, not paying attention to all the mini teams we usually did. We watched them, but not with the same excruciating intensity. We did not watch them intently because most of us were wringing our hands with nervousness. When you are waiting for your team to perform, everything else becomes a blur and background noise. It is really hard to explain as a parent. The mini teams finished, and it was now time for the youth division to perform. Peppermint's competition took the floor, and it was a team that had already won their paid bid to Summit. The routine was very strong. Peppermint had their work cut out for them. The amoeba of Stingray contingency was streaming into the arena. Emotions became overwhelming for the Peppermint parents as they watched hordes of people fighting to get into the packed arena to watch Peppermint. No matter what happened, the amount of pride emitted by the parents of this mini-team would be indescribable. They were about to take the stage as a youth team for the first time, and you could see them peeking from behind the curtain, and they were dying to get out on the mats. As the team inched toward the on-deck area, you could see the excitement emitting from the team. They wanted to show everyone what they had. You got the feeling that they knew they really had nothing to lose at this point. Coach Ashley led the Stingray coaching contingency out from behind the curtain. We were all trying to read her face to get a read on how the warm-up session went. She seemed very focused, but loose. She did not seem worried at all, as she focused all of her attention on the stage. Once the coaches arrived, there was a mad dash to the front of the stage from the parents. The PA announce introduced Peppermint, and they stormed the stage, beaming with smiles, and waved to the crowd as the crowd began roaring for them. They seemed a bit overwhelmed by all the energy of the crowd. As they all settled into their spots for the opening, you could see most of the team stopping for only a second to take in the moment. This was a big crowd for them. Coach Ashley readjusted a few of the mints to make sure they were positioned perfectly. You could see their smiles widened as they knew it was about time. The eternal pause and gap of silence began to put me on the edge of my knees waiting for them to start. Then a slight head nod from Coach Ashley and then came the thumbs up. It was go time. The music blared and the now famous Welcome to Mintland blared as the opening section of the music started. Peppermint flew into action with attitude I've never seen before. They were on fire and hit the opening with such confidence and sass. The entire team was clearly in the zone. They prepared for the stun of death and the entire parent section gave a collective gasp as they went up and rocketed down in sequence one by one. The team was making the routine look effortless as they flew through the air and tumbled flawlessly. The facial expressions and attitude were contagious and the arena roared with approval. The team rocketed into the dance section of the routine and they knew it was a good one. You could see a couple of the mints beginning to cry during the dance as the emotion rushed through their little bodies and the routine was coming to an end. With the final jump through to forward roll, Beecher polished off the routine, landing in the middle of the stage, surrounded by his crew with a beaming smile. The music abruptly stopped, and the crowd roared with approval. 
They knew it was a good one. The team tried to collect themselves to get off stage, but most felt compelled to hug each other. They were pumped as they hit again. They quietly ran off stage and were warmly welcomed by the entire coaching staff. Coach Ashley did a good job to try and temper their enthusiasm. As with any good team, overconfidence can be just as destructive as no confidence. The team watched the replay of the routine and the coaches carefully critiqued a few things that they could approve on for day two. We passed out some treats for the team so they could celebrate their great performance. Immediately, the team began to ask how the other teams looked. As always, we shared the truth. They looked good, but so did you. One of the kids asked if they looked too little on stage. I laughed and said, no, you guys looked larger than life. Then one of the mints stated that Peach was about to perform in the milk house and everything stopped. Word spread like wildfire and the entire team ran to their parents to ask if they could go watch their big sisters light up the floor. Without hesitation, we all began to make our way over to the large pavilion where Peach was performing. As we got closer to the arena, we ran into numerous Stingray families who all stopped to ask us how we did and were wishing us luck as we shared the news that we hit zero deductions. The sea of people leading into the arena was intimidating for the kids. The arena holds over 5,000 people and it was standing room only. Much of the team had to separate to find seats and we were all trying to settle in as a few of of the senior medium five teams were performing. As expected, the competition was fierce as the senior teams compete breathtaking combinations of tumbling, stunting, and dance. The arena was rocking with excitement as each team competed to be the best on that day. As many of the teams finished up, you could tell Peach was coming up soon the arena was noticeably more active and you could see people scurrying around the arena trying to get a better spot in anticipation of Peach taking the mats. At this stage of the season, the secret was out. Peach was the team to beat as they won the first two stages of the Triple Crown in the medium senior five division. The arena was bursting to watch Peach perform. At that point, it hit me. And I looked over at my oldest daughter and said, Can you believe all these people waiting to watch Peach perform? You are so lucky to be able to, to practice with them every week and watch them up close and in person. She responded, Yeah, they are our friends and our big sisters. She smiled and I looked down upon the stage beaming with pride. I looked out at the mints that were spread throughout the arena. The coaches made their way to the designated area in front of the stage. A few of the mints tried to screen to get the coaches' attention to wish them luck and let them know that they were there cheering for them as they always did. Coach Aaron noticed a few of the mints up in the stands and gave them a little wave and a smile. The mints began to jump up and down, excited that Coach Aaron noticed them up there. The PA announcer began to speak, and the kids were all on the edge of their seats. The PA system roared, And now, from Marietta, Georgia, the Stingray All-Stars Peach. All of the mints immediately stood up and began screaming their little lungs out, but this time it was different. The roar of the milk house drowned out the cheers from the little mini team that had constantly had their back all year. Peppermint's spirit and love transcended the noise of the crowd. It was too strong to be drowned out and they emanated a spirit from their seats that very clearly was felt all the way down on the floor. As the standing room only crowd watched the magical squad do their thing, I scanned the crowd and observed all the mints in various parts of the arena 
singing every word of the now famous music. When it came time for Peppermint's favorite part in the music, magically, the entire arena erupted by screaming, I got 99 problems, but a peach ain't one. As if almost to salute the friendship of the two teams, the Peppermints all smiled and jumped to the beat of the music as they watched their favorite team complete another flawless performance. As the crowd was going berserk, Peach filed off the stage with elegance and grace. It was time to regroup and get focused for the second day of competition. As it always does, the adrenaline rush of competing and watching other teams begins to wear off, and the crash effect of that waning adrenaline comes fast and with a vengeance. It was time to head back to the hotel for some relaxation. As we were walking back to the parking lot, we were overwhelmed with the amount of people randomly congratulating us and giving us best wishes for day two. Word spread that Peppermint had hit, and the question was, could they do it again on day two? And would it be good enough to earn an at-large bid? We did our best to maintain the normal competition routine. We as a family let the kids play and relax a little by the pool. Then we started an early dinner with friends and other Stingray parents. The trick was to keep the team humble and focused. And we as a parent group were pretty good at that at this stage of the season. I drafted out the final group text of the competition to all the families. I slowly began to get a few responses from some of my favorite parents. The parents were very upbeat and the text ran through the gamut of emotions of hope, anxiety, and fear. When you are alone in a hotel room with your child, as a parent, you are not able to share the emotion you are feeling with anyone else because you are protecting the fragility of your child's confidence. You are always second guessing your emotions as your child will feed off your behavior, but inside your emotions are running rampant. It is even tough to share what you are feeling with your own spouse in the same hotel room because you are constantly mindful of your child's presence. The only safe outlet for therapy and expression is often through text message to other parents or social media. I did my best to keep the responses positive yet humble. The only thing we could control at this point was to do the best we could to get our children to bed and hope they were in the best spirits to do the best in the morning. We knew there would be a different routine in the morning. On day two, the Peppermints would perform at Hollywood Studios in the Indiana Jones Arena. Not a huge change, but enough to make everyone a bit nervous. The next morning was upon us. Everyone was up bright and early, and the mass exodus began as everyone made their way to the venue. Tension was easily diverted as the families made their way toward the entrance of the theme park. The Peppermints were all smiles, and they gathered for potentially their last time as a group. As I started the final roll call, I knew what this meant, but I did not want to accept reality. I scanned over all 23 kids and began to get very sentimental. I was so grateful for everything the team had done all year, including welcoming me with open arms as they have done with everyone who came in contact with them all year. I did not want the season to end, but I knew the odds. I wanted them to do the impossible and extend their season. Everyone felt the same way. I could tell from the demeanor of the parents, destiny was in this team's favor but you always have to have a hint of anxiety. This was the little mini team that could. We were one more two minute and 30 second routine away from performing and learning our destiny. Unfortunately, we were still a few hours from the team taking the stage. The parents escorted the team toward the venue as a group. We kept the kids controlled as best as we could for the coaches. The entire team was accounted for and they were in great spirits. 
We were admiring the innocence of the moment as the team only focused on playing with each other, smiling and laughing while having fun together as a group. Never once did we get the sense that anyone was nervous or worried about what they were trying to attempt. The parents were clearly more nervous than the kids, and something was about to give. The parents kept asking me when the coaches were going to take the kids. They had been bottling up their emotions all evening. It seems the parents wanted to separate themselves so they could vent to each other and go blow off some steam. The coaches made their way over to the group and began to signal that it was about time to head to warm-ups. As the kids gathered, I don't think they realized this could be their last performance together. It was just not the way the kids were trained to think. They just knew they had to go out and do their best, and that would make everyone happy. The parents started to group together. One of the parents asked me if I wanted to go with them after the kids were released. I asked, well, where are you guys headed? She just responded, just follow us. As soon as coaches gave us the all clear and led the team toward warm-ups, a large group of the parents made a mad dash for the Tower of Terror. Clearly, the parents needed to blow off some steam, and Hollywood Studios was an awesome place to do it. After a bit of fun, it was getting closer to the performance time. We began jockeying our way toward the front of the venue, lower in the stands, as the other teams performed. The venue was outside, and the sun was beaming in from the back of the arena. We watched as all the teams performed, and they were good. Our family made its way to the front row of the arena, backed by the entourage of Peppermint parents. As Peppermint made their way into the staging area, we could see their heads popping up in the background. They seemed extremely excited to make their way to the exciting new venue. After watching Peach perform the day before, they must have felt like they were on cloud nine. Not only did Peppermint share the same uniform as Peach, but they also wore the same glitter paint along the side of their face. As the mint's heads kept peeking over the wall, the flashes of the glitter paint were fluttering as the sun hit their face. As the PA announcer began to announce Peppermint, I took a huge deep breath in a failed attempt to calm my nerves. The team stormed the stage with smiles and waves. You could not help but fall in love with the joy and innocence the team emanated. Coach Ashley, Coach Kelsey, Coach Jessica took their places in front of the stage. All eyes focused on Coach Ashley for the thumbs up. The music started and the team erupted into action. As they started, my eyes intently focused on every motion the team made. My eyes darted from left to right, right to left scanning the entire stage. As a dad, it is tough not to focus on your child, but as I have learned, cheer is a team sport. In order to honestly assess the team performance, you need to train yourself to watch the entire routine as a judge would. It was very tough to do between desperate gaffes and in each successful stunt or tumbling pass. It is tough to watch. The tension was getting to me, and we were only halfway home. As the team entered into the pyramid phase of the routine, they seemed confident and in control. My heart began to race more than usual. My eyes were fluttering back and forth, scanning every move of the routine. My breathlessness turned into gasps for air as the seconds seemed to tick away as minutes. I knew the routine like the back of my hand and I desperately kept looking for perfection with every scan of my eyes. If an arm fluttered or a foot seemed out of place, I tried to critique the routine within my head with the only split second I had until the next transition. As we inched toward the dance, I prayed nothing out of the ordinary happened. Peppermint seemed to look straight, and the coaches and parents with huge collective smile as to say, We got this. With confidence beaming, they nailed every count with a look of conviction. With the last few seconds of the routine, I felt a release of pressure. 
as the team had not let us down all year, they finished with authority. One of the new peppermints, who were overcome with emotions, stood with her hands in the air, making the praise emoji signal. I looked at my wife and said, I think they did it. Did you see anything out of place? She responded, No, they looked incredible again. With that, I immediately went backstage to help gather the team and get them organized. I wanted to bring the team up to the coaches so they could watch the replay of the routine. Peppermint began to make their way off the stage, and I noticed one of the mints in hysterics. The team surrounded her as they tried to figure out what the issue was. Coach Ashley came over to ask what had happened, as we feared she may have been hurt getting off the stage. She stated she dropped one of her body positions too quickly, and she thought they were now going to lose because of it. Everyone assured her that it was fine, and nothing looked out of place. She calmed down a bit, and they began to watch the replay of the routine. As the routine was displayed, the coaches gave recognition and positive feedback as the team displayed excellent execution. When it came to the section of the routine that was in question, we all focused on the athlete. What I saw, I could not believe. Coach Ashley said, See, there was no deduction there. You did great. What the little mint was referring to was something that many of the parents could not see. I saw it on the replay and only noticed it because I was so familiar with the routine. In one of the stunts, the flyers go up into a scale, and her leg was maybe an inch and a half lower than the other three. While it was not 100% perfection, it was far from a deduction. My first thought was how incredibly impressed I was that this team was so in tune with their routine that they knew within an inch or two if it was not perfect. It was a testament to the coaching and the dedication from this team. Coach Ashley finished the team meeting by stating how incredibly proud she was of this team effort. She reaffirmed that the team did their best, and that's all she could ask for. She let us know to reconvene at 10 a.m. for awards. One of the mints raised their hand to ask a question. Coach Ashley called on the mint. She stated, Okay, so you said we did our best, right? Does that mean we can have Dippin' Dots? The team erupted in cheers, and Coach Ashley gave them a huge smile and said, Well, I'll leave that up to your parents. Dippin' Dots at 10 a.m. doesn't sound like a good idea, but I'll let them make the call. Needless to say, many of us had Dippin' Dots for brunch that morning. About an hour later, the team began to reemerge from different corners of the theme park for the upcoming awards ceremony. Everyone was in good spirits, and the team was clearly having fun at Hollywood Studios. The team gathered together as we made our way toward the lower left corner of the venue as a team. We waited for the final teams to compete, and then once instructed, made our way down to the arena floor. The team was buzzing with anticipation and nervous energy. All of the level one teams that competed in the youth division in the morning gathered on stage. The announcer began to rattle off the winners in other divisions. Peppermint waited patiently and showed great sportsmanship, as all the teams do, cheering for everyone who competed. It was time for the Youth Large Division Awards, and everything seemed to be a blur. Everything seemed to move so fast, and the next thing you know, the MC was about to announce the second place finisher for the division. I scrambled to remove my phone from my pocket to capture the moment. Whatever happened, we knew we could be proud of this team and what they have accomplished, whether they won or not. As I began filming with my phone, the announcer began to say the name of the team. All I could do was look down at Peppermint. I wanted to remember the moment, good or bad. 
Whether they won or lost, it would not matter. In my mind, they proved they could compete at the higher level. The announcer began to speak, and I felt my body wince with anticipation as I held my breath, awaiting the fate of our team. Playing back the routine in my head one more time to think if there was anything I missed. Then it happened. The MC announced the name of the team for second place, and it was not Peppermint. I froze, and then I watched Peppermint freeze. They all wanted to spontaneously combust, but they could not. They had been trained and coached so well. Out of respect for the second place team, Peppermint sat in complete silence and as still as they possibly could. They all locked arms to help each other contain their excitement as they cheered on the second place team. As the team cleared the stage, you could tell the anticipation of the impending announcement was too much to handle. The mints began to pop up and down on their knees like jumping beans in anticipation of the final announcement. The announcer bellowed, and your winner in the youth large division from Marietta, Georgia, the Stingray All-Stars Peppermint. The team erupted in cheers, and they shot up out of their kneeling position in unison. The team collected themselves and made their way over to the pick up the banner and the trophy as a team. The excitement was too much for some, and tears of joy streamed down many of the Peppermint's faces. The team headed backstage towards the champion section to re receive their champion's jackets. I was tasked with organizing the team in reverse height order, shortest to tallest. As I organized the team, I started to walk toward the back of the line. Most of the new peppermints were towards the back, and I noticed one of the new peppermints seemed much more emotional than the rest of the team. I asked her if she was okay. I was not sure if she was hurt or did not feel good, she responded, I'm just so happy. I did not realize I get to keep the championship jacket. The team gave her a huge hug to comfort her. I was so proud of the team for embracing the new mints. I knew it meant a lot to be accepted by the entire group. Honestly, we were so lucky to have them. They truly complimented the team and made the team stronger as a whole. It was a moment I will never forget. After everyone received their awards, we took a few pictures, and then the focus turned to the elephant in the room. One of the kids asked, and all the parents were wondering the same thing. When did they make bid winner's announcement? Coach Ashley informed the group that she believed the announcement would be made at 4.30 p.m. in the same venue. She released the team to their parents and I informed them that I would try and confirm and send out a text message to verify the huge announcement. The team disappeared, and the families made their way back out into the theme park to take in a few hours of fun before we needed to be back for the announcements at 4.30. Our family ate lunch and began to take in some fun at Hollywood Studios. My youngest wanted to ride some of her favorite attractions and my oldest wanted to ride one of, the, one of the older roller coasters. Since my little one was too small for the roller coaster, we decided to split up as a family. My oldest daughter wanted to go with one of her older Stingray friends to wait in line for the rock and roller coaster ride. We told them they needed to be back in a few hours, so we did not miss the big announcement. She agreed and went off with her friend and their family. My wife and youngest daughter headed towards, towards the Toy Story ride, which was a favorite of my youngest. We got in line about 1.20 p.m. While waiting in line, I received a frantic text from one of the parents who were watching other teams in the arena. She said, They are making the youth-level bid announcements in five minutes. I froze and texted back immediately, Are you sure? They said 4.30. She responded, I am positive. I just heard the announcement. I'm sitting in the arena now. As fast as I could, I quickly pecked out a group text to everyone. 
to make their way back to the arena ASAP. My wife and I grabbed my youngest and darted back to the Indiana Jones Theater. It was going to be close, but we should be able to make it in time for the announcement. On the way back, I started receiving frantic texts from parents who were still heading to lunch or stuck in line for a ride or on a ride currently. My heart broke for them as I knew they would not be able to make it from across the park in time. My only hopes were that they stalled the ceremony and the announcements so everyone could make their way to the arena in time. My thoughts immediately shifted to my own peppermint. My oldest daughter was with one of her friends who did not have a cell phone. There was no way to alert her in time for her to watch the ceremony and announcements. We scrambled to the venue and arrived about halfway through the normal award ceremony for the competing teams. The bid announcements would take place at the end of the award ceremony. One by one, frantic parents and peppermints began arriving to watch the ceremony, completely drained and exhausted from running across the theme park. The award ceremony concluded, and the announcement said they would announce the at-large and paid summit bid winners momentarily. I was scanning the arena to see if any more peppermints or parents showed up. I was torn about the situation. I could not help but think maybe it may be better if the team were not present if they didn't win an at-large bid. But I cringed at the thought of them not being able to experience the moment if they were awarded such an honor. The music cascaded in theatrics and a loud drum roll emitted from the sound system. The announcer began to speak and my wife switched her phone to video the moment for the parents who were not going to be able to see the result. The MC shouted, and the winner of the at-large bid to Summit is Pro Athletics. The crowd erupted for the youth team who won from the small gym. My heart sank. I was crushed. I dropped my head down between my knees and my youngest daughter leaned over and said, They did not get it, did they, Daddy? I said, No, honey, they did not. The announcer continued and moved on to the second announcement. He shouted, And your paid Summit bid winner, the Stingray All-Stars! The announcer said the entire name, but with the er eruption of screaming, I could not hear the actual Stingray team that won. We had three potential teams that could have been awarded the honor. We stopped filming immediately to try to find out what the answer was. I ran to the top of the steps, looking for anyone who heard what the announcer said. I tried to replay the recording to make out what he said. My youngest daughter tugged on my shirt and said, Daddy, Daddy, they said peppermint. I collapsed from disbelief. There was mass confusion on the announcement, as no one made out what the announcer said. I stopped and immediately texted Coach Ashley, and I pecked out, Did we just get a paid bid? She responded, It sure sounded like it. I began walking around in complete shock. They did it. Not only did Peppermint get a bid to Summit, but the team was awarded a full paid bid in the youth division, meaning Peppermint outscored every level one team that competed in all age groups. It was a miracle and an amazing feat. Never did we dream the team would earn a paid bid. We were just hopeful to earn an at-large bid. We were looking to share the news as fast as we could. I turned to Twitter to make the announcement as I knew the families who were making their way to the arena would be glued to Twitter looking for any sign of an announcement. The second I tweeted the results, I began receiving rampant alerts of retweets and favorites from around the nation. So many people were eagerly anticipating the bid results for this little mini team that could. We ran into the first parents, and a few were trembling with emotion. Peppermints were running everywhere, hugging each other and crying tears of joy. It was truly a once-in-a-lifetime experience. 
Unfortunately, my daughter and a few other peppermints did not make it back in time to experience the good news. One by one, the families made their way back to the arena, and we were able to share the news with the ones who did not know already. About 30 minutes later, my oldest daughter made her way back to the arena. I slowly walked up to her and calmly shared that they had won a paid bid to Summit. She looked up at me, smiled, and said, Yeah, I know. About 10 people told me on the, on the walk back here. I looked her right in the eye and shared that I was so very proud of her and her team. After a fun day at the park, we all started back to the hotel. Many of the older Stingray teams heard the news and were all making Peppermint feel like celebrities. Many of the Mints wore their championship jackets, even though it was still very warm from the Florida sun. Everyone was extremely excited for them. It was truly an incredible weekend for all. That concludes Chapter 11, and that's how it went down. How a mini team ended up getting a paid bid to Summit. Next, we will continue on with our question and answer from Coach Ashley. And before the reading, we heard the, the first question on, on how uh, this, this goal came about. The second question, um, I asked Coach Ashley um, the question that was a valid one. Um, being a coach for as many years as she has with tiny and mini teams, I asked Coach Ashley, after giving the team an opportunity to go for this goal, in the back of your mind, did you really think they could pull off achieving this goal of making it to Summit? Here's her response. Absolutely. Based off the way we had scored that season, I felt an at-large bid was definitely possible. The final question I asked Coach Ashley is I really wanted to get inside her brain once we found out uh, the results from UCA. And I asked her, I know you've had some pretty amazing moments as a coach at Stingrays with all the teams you have coached over the years. Take me back to the moment in the theater at Hollywood Studios when they announced Peppermint had earned a full paid bid to Summit. Describe your thoughts as a coach and your feelings about that team. After I heard the at-large bids, I felt extreme disappointment. I really didn't think we had won a paid bid just because of all the other teams that were at UCA. When the announcer got to the paid bids and I heard Peppermint, I was honestly in disbelief. At that moment, the little team exceeded all expectations I could have ever had for them. I felt overwhelming pride in the 23 athletes that had come together for such a fun moment. Well, there you have it. That concludes Chapter 11, UCA, and the question and answer from Coach Ashley. I want to especially thank Coach Ashley for taking time out of her busy schedule to answer those questions on this very special time. I also wanted to thank Kara Witsip for the voiceover help on the questions. And if uh, Kara's voice sounds familiar to you, you've probably uh, heard her voice at Cheer Sport Nationals uh, over the PA system welcoming you into the Cheer Sport venue. Uh, if that voice sounded familiar to you, that is hers. I'm just kidding. It's not. But if you listen to her voice and the next time you're at Cheer Sport Nationals, you hear the sultry voice over the PA system welcoming into the, everyone into the venue, you will uh, certainly hear the similarities. We always joke uh, with Kara about that. So thank you, Kara, for that. Um, the next chapter is the final chapter on this journey. It, it is the Road to Summit, Chapter 12. And uh, during this chapter, it's a very, very good one. You will um, learn the ups and the downs emotionally of a mini team preparing to go to one of the biggest events in their lifetime for them at this time, and that is Summit. And um, I dig into a little bit of the emotional uh, challenges that the team faces. And I certainly dive into 
uh, the the incredible relationship with their big sisters, the Peach Rays, and how their spirit touches upon um, a team as they prepare for Summit and as they come back as world champions in the C- Senior Medium 5 division. Um, just an amazing experience that I'm looking forward to sharing with you. And also, uh, it, it's this is it. Uh, they're heading down to Summit, and I will share uh, how they end up doing as a mini team um, in this final chapter. So thank you all for listening. Uh, please, if you can, if you like the podcast, please give us a review in iTunes. It certainly helps uh, spread the word, and um, it helps us in the iTunes rankings as well. Uh, so more people can be exposed to this uh, fun story. Uh, Thank you again, and we will talk with you soon. Welcome to Midland. The greatest place on earth has blooming green turf. It's always a magical day when you're Midland.